It is in our kitchens as utensils, on the shelves as essentials, in our bodies as microplastics, and it makes up the majority of landfills. Between 2009 and 2015, Nigeria produced 2.3 million tons of primary plastics, yet only 30% of plastics are recycled annually. These plastics clog our drains and lead to flooding, degrade our aquatic habitat and drastically reduce potential revenues from tourism, fisheries and the shipping industries. Lagos is the commercial nerve center of Nigeria. We have over 75 percent of the commercial services here in Lagos. Our population is increasing day by day and waste management is becoming something that is very, very um, cumbersome. Every packaging you use as a manufacturer is a function of consumer preference. However, uh, you have unintended consequences uh, as we see in plastic today. I mean, there are many advantages uh, uh, of using plastic in packaging. Okay, however, you see the uh, challenge we have in the environment because people are not disposing plastic waste uh, responsibly. A pressing concern is the open burning of biomass and waste material, which makes up 30% of the major sources of particulate pollutants and CO2 in Lagos. The rest of plastics end up in the ocean, constituting a great danger to marine life. The resultant health and environmental implications are very dire and in most cases result in unquantifiable economic losses. Negotiations depend on seafood, but today we are scared of eating seafood because of microplastics. The World Bank Group, through its multi-donor trust fund, ProBlue, has mobilized resources to support Lagos State and Nigeria in addressing plastic waste pollution. The intervention also seeks to assist stakeholders and partners in the waste management value chain with the necessary information and skills to combat the challenge. You know, this is um, one topic or one area that is very important to us. And um, you can see that, for us, there's a strong political will behind it. The recent National Policy for Plastic Waste Management that was approved a few, just a few years ago actually, actually states that producers should be designing for recyclability. So a lot of our members are already thinking of how do they des design for recyclability. We welcome what World Bank is doing in our policy we use the um, World Bank data of 0.79 kilogram per capita to see, uh, you know, project how many um, bottles we have here in Lagos. Norman's responsibility is solid waste management for the entirety in Lagos State, and our mandate is to ensure a consistently cleaner Lagos. A lot of things have been put in place to ensure our operational efficiency and our regulatory standard that we set for all the operators that are working with us. So one of the things we've done in recent time is to decentralize our operation into five districts for efficiency across the state. We have also initiated a Lagos Recycle Initiative to ensure that we are separating our waste from source. We've also looked at the need for containerization of waste to ensure that our people and every household in Lagos is promoted to have a bin, a waste bin, from point of generation. We launched the Lagos Recycle Initiative alongside the Packham app. And that app was launched in order to bring smartness, the Smarter City agenda, to the way we collect our solid waste, particularly recyclables. To drive adoption at the policy level, it has become a requirement for World Bank supported projects, especially in the health sector that generates plastic waste, to have a clear waste management plan. So managing plastic waste is something very important to the bank. 
projects may not be approved without a clear roadmap in terms of how to manage waste. And the project can also be cancelled or terminated if there are evidences that there are violations in the implementation of uh, waste management plans because we are very, the environment is very important to the bank. Uh, development should not be in isolation. It should also include issues of your environment. Creating an environment free of waste requires each stakeholder in the value chain to work harmoniously towards implementing the national policy on solid waste management and the national policy on plastic waste management. There is also a need to drive behavioral change among communities in order to address the problem holistically. So a lot of our organizations are going into research to find out what are the alternatives. A lot of us talk about stopping the use of plastic, but what are the alternatives? And so the second question to ask is, are those alternatives safe to be in contact with the food? We understand that recycling is the way to go. Separation of our waste for, from source is the way to go because we cannot continue to put 100% of what we generate into our dump site. Lagos is limited by space, limited by size, surrounded by water. The Coca-Cola Foundation is also uh, supporting in this respect. A whole lot of grants have been given to uh, different organizations, either to create awareness on the issues of uh, responsible disposal of plastic or collection, okay? So that is also helping in shaping the uh, recovery ecosystem. Uh, and a whole lot of other in initiatives that we have put in place. A lot of work needs to be done progress being made over time. Last year, we saw a significant increase in the volume of recyclables that have been taken in Lagos State. One of our recyclers achieved the first milestone of taking over 75,000 metric tons in a calendar year. That's the first time that's happening. And that's happened at the, at the back of the support that the PACAM app gives them. And this year, our expectation is to see up to 10 of our recyclers surpassing that milestone. And with the support and various initiatives that we're introducing and putting into the Parker map and Loma this year, there's no, we're, we're on course to achieve that. We know that um, we need to also go to the grassroots and engage with communities to spread this message. A lot of people still don't know about this. A lot of people still dispose their packaging material indiscriminately when they can be used for better use. So we go to communities one at a time and so far, since inception in 2018, we've gone to over 50 communities. And when we engage with these communities, we do a buyback scheme. So our members have products, we use those products to, as incentives. Everybody in each of those ministries working collaboratively, identifying partners, you know, we will be able to build a very strong ecosystem. <laughs>